Hey guys, it's Omni here with some more AFK Arena. Today we're back on the pay to win account and we are gonna be running through the brand new guide from White Sushi in regards to the lat loss sigils. But first, I wanted to show a very, very cool thing that I did not know. Not sure if another a lot of other players know about the lost sigils event, but when you look at the actual Glacial Lullaby skin set, you can preview it. There is a preview of the room and how very cool it looks. It is super expensive. That is a insane amount of sigils, 150 sigils to pick up this piece. You can only get one, but here is the caveat that I never did know. Boom, Glacial Lullaby set. You can buy it for diamonds, 7,200 diamonds, meaning that our free to play players can pick this up without sacrificing the Celestials and Hypogen heroes in here, or without um, sacrificing the red chests, which are the biggest priority. So we're gonna spend 7,200. We are gonna pick this up. There is all of our pieces for the set. I wish we would be able to pick up this first set. I would buy it with diamonds all day long. Very, very cool to see. So let's go ahead and look at where our um, teddy bear is, our, our big Damon teddy bear. I wanna turn his room into the glacial room which I believe is building four. I think they're up here. Where is the teddy bear? There is the teddy bear. So we'll go ahead and modify his room. We'll drop the themes in here. Where is it at guys? There it is, the glacial lullaby. Look how bright the room is. That is very, very cool looking. Look at his room. Look at that floor. Oh, that is very, very cool looking. Looking through it here. Definitely worth the diamonds. Again, I would never spend the sigils on it. Um, th that is a ton of money to spend the sigils on there. But overall, if I can spend 7,200 diamonds, I know it it's gonna sacrifice two summons, but that is okay because you know what? We have that set and we have that set forever, which again is very, very cool. Big shout out to Sam. He shared that with me today. I did not know. I did not know you could buy it until he said, just do a little video to let your viewers know and also go over the guide for the Lost Sigils, which we're gonna go ahead and take a look at right now. So looking at the guide itself, this is the Lost Sigils. Again, big shout out to White Sushi. Looking at the value. So this is really something that I don't pay that much attention to, but when you look at the value of the Celestial and Hypogen heroes, 125, the smaller the number, the better, meaning out of all the events, we can see Lost Sigils 2020 of September. We see Lost Sigils back in May, Lost Sigils in 2020 of March. Lost Sigils is the worst value for the Celestials and Hypogen heroes when it goes into comparison to Red Chess. This is what everything is based on, the value of Red Chess. Value references to how many red emblems you lose per resource, smaller the number, the better. So if you look, a majority of the things in here are red. Um, historically, the Lost Sigil event is a very, very good event to get red chests out of. They are the best value by far, and you can get 200 red chests. That is right, 200 red chests as free to play, which is absolutely phenomenal. That is a ton of chess. I mean, that's two thirds of the way being all the way to a plus 30 signature item on a hero. So let's go ahead and break down what the rewards look like themselves. So of course, furniture skin, purely cosmetic, no stats, but is the only way free to play can obtain. Not any more sushi, correct the guide. Absolutely amazing. You can obtain this with your diamonds, just like you've seen right now. Is it worth trading the 150, I believe it was 150 faction emblems? Not at all, because you can buy it. Diamonds you will get, you accumulate day by day. Buying it, buying the furniture skin, I would highly recommend, especially if you are a collector like myself. Go ahead and pick that up. Again, I would not spend sigils for it, especially because it is 150 sigils free to play. I would absolutely not, it, it is not worth it. Unless you really, really want that furniture skin, go ahead and pick it up. Looking at number one, red emblems. Lost Sigils have a track record of making red emblems a lot more valuable than other rewards as seen from the table above. Easily the best choice. It has always been the best choice when we've seen the Lost Sigils event. Looking at number two is of course, Celestials and Hypogen Heroes. Great selection this time around. Kazard, Lucrita. Lucrita is used for quite a few things. She is very, very powerful. We've seen a recent rework with her. 
I would recommend picking her up, but of course the priority, biggest priority is the twins. Having copies of the twins, even having them at Elite, Elite Plus, the more copies that you get of this specific hero will make it easier for the rest of the game. You'll get more resources, you'll get more loot, you'll progress further in the Abyssal Expedition. Buy the twins out of here if you do not have them built. They are by far the biggest priority. Zafriel is a hero that is really focused in PvP. Does run on a couple campaign teams, but overall, especially to get multiple copies of him, he is down quite a bit down the list for the Stargazers. Same with Kazard. So really looking in here, your two strong options are, of course, the Twins and Lucrita are the very, very good ones. Personally, priority free to play goes Twins, Lucrita, Kazard, Zafriel, Flora. There we go. Broke down white sushi style, just like we have been saying. Um, looking at our number three, gold emblems and blue fodder. Gold emblems, this is one of the reasons why in the Noble Society I went gold emblems. They are typically short. You need a lot of heroes to go ahead and get up to the plus 11 to plus 20 with those gold emblems. But blue fodder cards are pretty good as well. Nine fodder cards when pegged to the tavern summoning value is approximately 2471 diamonds, which is the same amount of sigils. So sigils you can buy, blue fodder you cannot. Remember, especially with the changes to the gold emblems, meaning instead of being 10 in the store every reset, you have an option to now get 20 gold emblems in the reset for the store, which I believe puts it a little bit lower on the list. I would prioritize number three as blue fodder if you have heroes to ascend. For instance, on our pay to win account, we have a lot of copies of Kalthar, we have a lot of copies of Thorin, we have a lot of copies, elite plus copies of heroes. Blue fodder in my specific situation does take priority as number three by far. Um, might be a little different if you're starting to see a lot more max out heroes. Gold emblems might be a little bit more value than overall on the blue fodder. So looking at number four, I don't think there is a number four here. Maybe that's where the uh, question marks came in. Uh, Twisted Essence, in terms of value, 800 tree juice are at best 4,800 diamonds with the equivalent of 6,667 diamonds worth of faction emblems. Not very significant for free to play because the Elder Tree does take a significant investment to build. Um, it's only recommended for spenders or those competing in Legends Championship. Remember, Legends Championship, very, very high priority to build up that tree to maximum efficiency because you do need it. Number five, of course, is Poe Coins and Mythic Gear. Mythic Gear, never a good option. Even further down the list, I, I agree with this as well, Mythic Gear is a little bit further down the list now that you can buy it from the guild shop. So from the store, you can buy specific Mythic Gear. You no longer have to worry about choosing it here. Might play a little bit of a waiting game to get the gear that you're looking for, but ultimately you can refresh the shop or you can just wait to get that gear with the guild coins that you get, which in turn, I believe puts up Po coins just a little bit, just for the simple fact, Po coins are a, a limited commodity. You can buy them with gold, but it is 250. You get some out of the Twisted Essence, but to get Po coins in bulk, an event like this would be ideal, especially if you're looking to really stockpile those mythic uh, furniture pieces. Number six comes in at Silver Emblems, regular heroes. Silver Emblems, I would never buy. You do get 30 out of the shop, which is very, very easy to obtain. So definitely going that route with the Silver Emblems. Would not, and, and absolutely would not buy them, as well as regular heroes. You should absolutely never pick up regular heroes for a couple reasons. Number one, you can put them in the wish list. It increases the probability of pulling those heroes Putting them in the wish list will be very, very solid. Second one is, of course, you get them out of stones. Um, Celestials and Hypogens you do too, but the majority of the elite stones you use will be regular heroes. And the final and most important is the desired hero summons, meaning you can specifically summon heroes that you're looking for without the cost. When you look here, it is 150 emblems, which again is very, very expensive per hero, absolutely not worth it. Very, very last resort. Do not buy the regular heroes out of here. You have a incredible amount of ways to actually get these heroes without getting them from the event. 
which brings us to our tips and tricks. You can battle six times a day. Make sure you're maximizing your battles. Each win will give you five sigils depending on the faction. You have 360 total over 12 days as free to play, which will give you a copy of a Celestial or Hypogen Heroes and some red chests. Um, losing does not consume a run. You do not lose anything if you do not win. Um, you can rent mercenaries. Renting mercenaries in this is a very, very big priority, especially if you're looking for um, Celestial or Hypogen specific sigils, because if you don't have those heroes built, it can make a really big difference. Below are the recommended formations. Have to run each formation six times per day. Daily deals with the math. I got a lot of questions about this today with daily deals. Since you won't have enough to redeem for a third set of red emblems, you can choose to forego two purchases, which saves you $2. So essentially you can buy for 12 days instead of 14, or you can go ahead and buy all 14 days to get the red or the um, gold emblems in there. So essentially with your extra 84 sigils, you will not, I repeat, you will not have enough sigils to buy two copies of the twins. You do have to spend more than your $14 in total. You actually have to buy one or two of the $5 packs to go ahead and reach enough tokens or enough sigils to go ahead and pick up two copies of the twins. But in that case, you are also foregoing all of the red chest, meaning you can get two Celestials or Hypogens with a little bit spent, which is about $20, but you will forego getting red chest at all. So you will get absolutely no red chests out of this event, but again, you will get two copies of the Celestials or the Hypogen Heroes. So this is a breakdown of what you're looking for. So 200 faction emblems will be Lightbearer and um, Wilder, as you can see the breakdown right there. This is day one through 12 that he shows here of the breakdown of what you should look at with the main being Rowan and Tassie. Faction emblems, if you're looking for the faction emblems, one of each faction if you want some flexibility in there. So it gives you a general guide of what to run who, with who, twin emblems. There's the count that you get with your 360 emblems. Doing this method on the twins emblems, you'll waste 11 sigils. So technically it's possible to optimize an individual day and get 20 more silver. But again, silver is not really the big priority. So this is the breakdown. I will go ahead and put a link down for White Sushi's Guide below. Absolutely amazing. Um, definitely a couple things that I would tweak. I love the daily deal math. A lot of people have been looking for that. Celestials and Hypogen should be what you get out of here or Red Emblems. If you have the Celestials and Hypogens built, Red Emblems are 100% the priority when it comes to building up some of these heroes. Overall, that, that is kind of where it is. Red emblems, of course, out of this event, looking at the graph above, they are a huge, huge value. So guys, that is White Sushi's Guide for the Lost Sigils. I hope it helped, especially for newer players, newer to the event. Make sure you plan exactly how you're gonna proceed here. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and as always, thank you guys for watching.